Hello, hello, welcome back. Look at this. Uh, this is my fake Tarmac uh, SL7 frame and it's starting to look like a bicycle. Um, so this is a mid-build update. I'm probably past the mid-build point, but um, I wanted to give you guys an update before it's fully completed. Um, so what's missing? Uh, the chain is still missing. The pedals are missing. And, and the bar tape. Uh, that's pretty much it in terms of missing parts. Uh, of course, I need to uh, you know, plug <laughs> plug these hoses and and do the all the adjustment. Um, I will change the tires also. These are just some some old tires I put. Um, so I received some GP five thousand in thirty two millimeters uh, that I'll swap. Um, the, the pedals, one of five pedals, uh, bottle cages, and I got to change somewhere uh, up there. So I'll just give you an update of what went well and what went, uh, not so well, uh, so far. So the first thing that I did, uh, in the assembly process was to put the seat post on. Well, in fact, I put the battery inside the seat post. Uh, there's no battery holder that came with the fake frame. I tried to look for one online, couldn't find any. So I put some packing foam, uh, in there and it holds the battery very well, very well. I did have to cut the seat post. It was too long. Uh, the seat post that came with this fake frame was a 38 millimeters, and that's a small frame. It's a, it is a 52. Uh, so I had to cut it because now at some point, you no, know, the seat tube changed the shape here. So there's a limit uh, to how deep you can put you know, the, uh, the seat post in. So I had to cut it. So first step, cut the seat post, uh, put the battery in, and then assemble the whole thing, uh, put some carbon paste so, so it holds well. Uh, there's a little bolt here, so that, that works fine. Um, I've put the seat on, that's another uh, AliExpress seat, uh, full carbon. I've been using this seat for a couple of years now and, and I really like it, uh, at least for me. Uh, if we go to the back here, derailleur on, that's us say um, the new Tegra uh, R8150. Um, this one is, uh, is the i2. I did swap the derailleur hanger. I wanted to try the direct mount derailleur hanger. Um, still not clear what are the advantage of using direct mount. The pros are using it. Um, apparently it's good uh, because the wheel sits, no, the, 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 the derailleur will sit farther in the back uh, because you remove the B-link. So apparently it's easier to remove the wheel uh, after. So it might make a difference for the pros, uh, but for, most of the people it doesn't make any difference, but I want to try new stuff with this bike. So, um, uh, I'm trying this. I still hate, 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 hate this bolt. Uh, it's the, like the only silver bolt on the bike. It, it, this bolt screams fake frame. Uh, if one day I'll find a black bolt to put there instead, I'll swap it. But that's something I really hate with this, uh, this fake frame. Uh, the, the painting around this area could be much better. Uh, what else? Uh, brake caliper, no problem there. Uh, I did manage to put the little grommet here. That's the the genuine specialized part. Um, so it looks it looks nice. It just looks nicer. It's nicer if you put the grommet. And really, routing the hydraulic hose through the frame, uh, not problematic at all. You don't need any special tools. Um, no, you just feed you no know, the hose through that small hole, and then it'll go up, you know, to the bottom bracket. Uh, of course, you no, know, without the crank set, and then you can feed it through you no know, the head tube. Um, same thing, front derailleur. I've just installed it. Um, it'll need you no, know, it'll need some adjustment. Uh, bottom bracket. It is the. I don't think we. I'm not sure if we'll be able to see it. Anyway, it is the uh, Shimano BBR60 bottom bracket. It's a pretty standard bottom bracket, threaded uh, bottom bracket. Um, no problem putting the bottom bracket at all. Uh, no drama. Uh, just just be patient. Uh, make sure the threads are properly engaged. You now the second it gets hard uh, to you know, to screw on the bottom bracket, you're in the wrong thread. So screw out. Just be patient. It should just go easily in there. Um, so no problem there. Putting the crank, however, uh, into the bottom bracket that required more, you know, a bit more uh, convincing uh, than than I thought. I had to push like really hard. I went online, I went to read about it. Apparently it's, it's normal uh, with the BBR60. They tend to be um, pretty tight. And maybe I had this, uh, just a combination where 
the you know because of the tolerances the, the the bottom bracket was on the small side the axle of the the crank was on on, on, on the larger side but uh anyway so in summary putting the bottom bracket in no problem at all clean threads uh no need to retap or anything put it <laughs> the crank set that was hard uh that required a bit more uh strength than i expected but no 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 works well in the front here that was my first deception uh so putting the caliber in uh the caliper in no problem but the hole in the fork where you put the holes in uh is larger is larger than expected um by itself i don't think it's a problem but i couldn't put the grommet in so it doesn't look i'm trying to get a good image it doesn't look super clean okay uh first deception on this frame but really minor really minor okay uh beside that okay this whole area here putting the headset uh putting the head tube routing the uh, brake hoses it's it's a pain no there's no way around it it's a major pain but i don't think it's related to the fact that it's a fake frame i, I think it's just related to you know the, the fundamental design of this frame where you gotta route all these hoses uh internally here with very sharp turns and these these hoses are stiff i mean these, these things are, are really stiff they're hard to move around but no i finally i managed to get it um what else uh the stereo tube i had it cut by a shop i measured it myself i do not have the guide to cut it so i got it cut by a shop i've put the expander plug and what i didn't realize uh, you might have seen it from my previous video the the expander plug especially the post recall design is extra long but on on the small frame like this it is too long and it's actually in, in the specialized video it, it tells you the you no know, for you no know, the that plug for a smaller frame it could be too long so i had to cut it uh i used a hose cutter um not a hose cutter but a pipe cutter you no know, where, where you you just turn around to cut it so i didn't I did not expect that so cut the stereo tube um cut the expander put the expander in and then just just spent a lot of time cursing running all the cables uh not cables but really hoses uh in there and i'm still unsure about the the height of of, of the of the spacer uh but no you have some leeway so you can remove uh, this is the way I've, I've put it no if i want i can remove a five mil spacer and put it on top instead it, it won't look as clean as how it is currently uh but but it's doable same thing with the handlebar, routing the hoses inside and through those little holes, a real pain too. Uh, you just gotta be patient and try not to curse too much, okay? Um, and then of course I have to plug this. Well, this is how I'm at this decision point. I, I do not have the tools to cut and to bleed the brakes. This is my first, that would be my first bike with uh, this brakes. So I gotta decide: do 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 I buy the tools and try to do it myself, or do I pay a shop? Um, yeah. So this is pretty much where we are. Um, so in summary, it's no drama. I mean, I did not expect I, I did not expect any difficulties uh, because it's a fake frame. I knew this would be tough, but it's not related to the fact that it's a fake frame. It's just related to the fundamental design uh, of this frame. Um, in hindsight. Uh, it, it is an experiment, all right? But if I had to buy the genuine frame, I'm not sure I would buy a tarmac. If you plan to do any maintenance assembly by yourself, uh, it's painful. You no, know, there are a lot of um, no property parts. You no, know, this the seat post is not round. A lot of small parts that goes in there. If I had to buy a genuine frame, maybe I would be a bit more tempted by the Afios because it's more standard. But uh, I mean, it, it, this one, it, I gotta admit, it looks great so far. Um, so that's it. So mid build update, um, no drama, no big difficulties, no flaws that I could find uh, during the assembly. Um, all right, so that's it for today. So I'll do a final update when this bike's gonna be completely built. And then I'm gonna attempt to try it. Uh, I'm gonna ride it on the indoor trainer, try to stress it a little before riding outdoors. So I hope that's helpful. 
uh, what do you think? Uh, put it in the comments. I, I try to reply to all questions. And see you next time.